One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and yes, your boy has had herpes for like the last week. This cold sore will not go away. And if you're watching me and it bugs you, trust me, it bugs me just as much as it bugs you. And I just had to get that off my chest because I want I want me to talk about it before someone in the comment section does, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars once again. We are only about a couple of weeks away from NFL free agency, and usually by this time uh, of the year, us Jags fans are up and down, excited, excited to see who we are going to end up getting, but unlike most years, the Jaguars are really in a weird situation as far as cap space goes, so they won't really be able to play too much in free agency, but that doesn't mean we can't dream. So ladies and gentlemen, this is eight free agents the Jaguars should target in free agency. Coming in at number eight, we have wide receiver Jamison Crowder. And just a heads up for you guys, last year when I made a top ten list, of free agents we should get. I got ASJ right and I got Andrew Norwell right. So you know I'm a genius. So whoever, who's, we're guaranteed to at least get two people on this list and Jameson Crowder would not be a terrible addition to the Jacksonville Jaguars squad. The Jags are in desperate need of some wide receiver help. Jameson Crowder in no way, shape, or form is going to be a real explosive wide receiver, but I think the Jags do currently have that in uh, D.D. Westbrook and Marquise Lee coming off an injury. You know, a lot of people have differing opinions on Marquise Lee and the impact that he left on, uh, with the Jags during his uh, healthy time here, and if we should have extended him, maybe that's going to be like another Blake Bortles situation. <laughs> you know, and I'm already doing it, where you're kicking yourself thinking, man, we should have just extended Allen Robinson instead. Just like everybody said, man, and no one expected that. No one expected us to keep Marquise Lee over Allen Robinson, but I digress. So now the Jags have Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook, D.J. Chark as well, uh, Keelan Cole who did uh, regress. So the Jags are in need of some wide receiver help. And I think that Jamison Crowder fits that void. He's a small, fast guy in the slot. He has solid hands. He's done it. He's done a good job uh, during his stints in Washington. So I think that Jameson Crowder would be a welcome addition to the Jacksonville Jaguars squad. Also, he's not going to be that expensive. I don't think the Jags could really afford a Golden Tate. So, you know, with the wide receivers I have on this list, I have two. There'll be a one later. And just a heads up again, this isn't really ranked from worst to best or who we should really target. It's just eight straight. Uh, just, you know, I was flowing. So, you know, that these are just the eight guys I think the Jags should target. <clears throat> Jameson Crowder is one of those guys at the wide receiver position that can just get it done. Coming in at number seven, we have Earl Thomas. Now, this one is definitely, definitely a wee bit out of uh, reach, but the Jags do need some safety help because um, to Sean Gibson, he's on the chopping block. Barry Church, of course, got cut. Ronnie Harrison and Earl Thomas would be nasty. Now, this would be a really great duo, and it would help uh, Ronnie Harrison grow in the long term to have a legend at the safety position like Earl Thomas. You know Earl Thomas doesn't want to come back to Seattle. You know, he flipped off the sidelines after he got injured. There's no love lost between the two uh, the two players. Uh, the There's no love lost between Earl Thomas and the Seattle Seahawks, I should say. Um, and he definitely will become a free agent this year. The Jags, again, won't have too much money to play with, but if they're going to offer a free agent a big money deal, throw a lot of money at Earl Thomas. I think that this is a guy that could come in be a difference maker for the Jacksonville Jaguars on the defense that is already really, really stout. You throw in Earl Thomas to a secondary like we have now, and then it's just like the Legion of Boom all over again, and this defense steps up and just gets more and more elite. Coming in at number six, I have quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. Now, if we are going to pay a free agent quarterback to be on the team, we should pay Teddy Bridgewater. And I also think if we pay a Teddy Bridgewater or a Tyrod Taylor, 
that we're going to go out and get ourselves a quarterback in the draft, either in the first round or maybe in the second round. It shouldn't be in the second round. It should be in the first round. Try to trade up, get your guy to compete with Teddy Bridgewater or a Tyrod Taylor. But if the Jags go out and get Nick Foles, the Jags are going to do a Jags thing, and they're just going to stick with Nick Foles and probably not even draft a quarterback till the fifth, sixth round and get Gardner Minshew, who – a lot of people would have beef with, but I really like Gardner Minshew. So I guess that was a bad example for me personally, but you know what I mean. Like, we're going to wait late to get a quarterback, and then our quarterback situation is going to be just as fucked as it was last year. But I think Teddy Bridgewater is a guy that he is injury prone. So, you know, even if he does get out there and he gets hurt, we do have that uh, start stunning rookie quarterback on the bench, either Haskins or Murray, and they will be able to go out there and get their opportunity uh, because Teddy Bridgewater went down. Or this could be Bridgewater's time to shine and say, hey, you remember when y'all drafted Bortles over me? You should have drafted me the whole time. And, uh, you know, some Jags fans still uh, cling on to that to this very day. So they really hope that uh, Bridgewater comes to town. Another advantage of getting Teddy Bridgewater, again, is that he's not very expensive. They're not going to have to pork up a lot of money to get uh <clears throat> Teddy Bridgewater and I also don't think they'll have to sign him to that long term of a contract I'd imagine just a one two year deal for Bridgewater would be enough to bridge the gap between him and the uh, rookie quarterback whoever the Jags decide to get uh, it was between him and Tyrod Taylor in this situation you saw what Tyrod did as a stopgap guy in Cleveland I decided to go with Teddy uh, he did struggle a little bit when he was taking snaps with New Orleans I think it was because he has his cousin you know, played in a while, but, you know, get some uh, stuff underneath his feet and uh, see how he can play with a full season. And maybe Teddy Bridgewater might just be your starting quarterback next year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Coming in at number five, we have Tevin Coleman. Now, I'm wearing the boys jersey right now, the old Leonard Fournette, the old LF27. But, unfortunately, the future with him and the Jags is so unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if he's still going to have this discipline issues, if he's going to continue to get hurt. You know, he looks like he wasn't necessarily a good pick from when we got him in the draft the year we drafted him. So we need a guy that could be reliable because we're also letting guys like TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant go as well. And there's also rumors going around that we are going to be getting rid of uh, Carlos Hyde as well. So, you know, our running back room is going to be completely, completely defeated. And one guy that's really used to sharing carries and is a good running back in that sort of role is Tevin Coleman out of the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons decided to stick with Devontae Freeman. They're going to let Tevin Coleman walk which is crazy because that was like one of the best one-two punches in a long, long, long time. And um, I'm excited to see what he can do, and I, I'm excited to see where he goes, and I hope the Jags decide to sign, uh, snatch him up because him and Leonard Fournette would be a really good one-two punch in Jacksonville as well, especially if Doug Marone wants to continue to do this power running, running style offense. I think Tevin Coleman will be a great addition to the Jacksonville Job Wars running back room and a great addition to the team overall because I think it'll help Leonard Fournette uh, play better because this guy has legitimate NFL starting experience, whether that be, uh, you know, even though he's sharing carries with Devontae Freeman, you know, this is a running back that has over a thousand yards. He's done it. He's been a really good back for a really long time. Have him breathe down Leonard Fournette's uh, neck to really get him to try harder and to uh, participate more. And I think that Tevin Coleman would be a really solid free agent signing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Coming at number four, we have defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson. So that's one thing that is no secret for the Jags this season is that they're going to be cutting some key defensive linemen this year, whether that be Malik Jackson or Marcel Darius or both. Um, they might cut Darius and trade Malik or vice versa, but I can't see either one of them uh, being on this team next year. Uh, Avery Jones is a guy that will fill in. He'll fill in well. And then, of course, you got Calais and Yannick and Gokwe on both sides. So that leaves one defensive tackle spot open uh, for business. And I think giving it to a veteran that has seen everything and has done well for himself would be a really, really good idea. And one of the guys to, you can go out and do that to is Sheldon Richardson. Sheldon Richardson, I think, will be a little bit expensive, so this might be a little bit far-reaching. But uh, adding another elite uh, veteran defensive lineman to this defensive line uh, with Calais Campbell, Unique Ngakwe, Avery Jones, who has really stepped up, got most of the starts over Malik Jackson last year, then this defensive line basically stays where it is, and the Jags won't have to worry about drafting a defensive tackle in the first round. I think that's basically kind of 
why I have Sheldon Richardson on this list. However, there is a good possibility that the Jaguars' uh, first-round pick from last year, Taven Bryan, makes the move to defensive tackle. He's a big boy. That wouldn't be necessarily a bad move. But getting Sheldon Richardson, a guy who's done it you know, for a while now, and he's a veteran, and he could really bring up the overall stoutness of this defensive line. The only problem is, is he might be a little bit too expensive but if he is asking for the right price, I definitely think Sheldon Richardson is someone the Jacksonville Jaguars should pursue in free agency. Number three, Kwan Alexander. Kwan Alexander is another wily veteran. He's been playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a while now. And the Jags are looking for a guy that can be a true middle linebacker. Have Tillman Smith and Miles Jack control the outside. Um, and I think Kwan Alexander would be a really good pickup. I think that he would be kind of a Paul Puzlesny figure to these guys. A veteran, true middle linebacker that knows how to play the position. He's a little bit older, and uh, you know he's really trying to make a run at something. And hopefully the Jags this year build enough in free agency and hopefully get their quarterback to where uh, this destination is going to be appealing to a guy like Kwan Alexander, who essentially is probably chasing a ring right now. And this is the team that needs to improve and I know we went 5-11 last year but if we do improve some key positions I think the Jags are right back there and have a, uh, have a chance to really make a run uh, for the playoffs at least and I think Kawan Alexander will want to be a part of the ride especially being a defensive player knowing the talent the Jags have on the defensive side of the ball at least for one more year you know the Jags have yet to extend Yannick Ngakwe they've been yet to extend Jalen Ramsey so you know there's really no 100% idea of how this defense is going to look next season. Hopefully, at least Jalen Ramsey comes back. I would love to have Yannick Ngakwe back as well. Uh, but if we can only sign one back, I would honestly sign. Oh, man, that's hard. I, that's, a, that's another video for another day, to be honest. But Kawan Alexander is a guy that <clears throat> the Jags should really try and target this season because, you know, you don't know how good this defense is going to be. It, you know, sign a veteran to a two-, three-year deal to really try and bridge the gap and try to get us to the next level. Uh, being a true middle linebacker, really uh, tutoring Miles Jackson more, Telvin Smith as well. Uh, those two really did a lot better with Puz Lesney there, and I think that that would be the same case with a guy like Kawan Alexander. Coming in at number two, we have Mitch Morris. Mitch Morris is a guard, and the Jags definitely need some guard help. They're going to be letting A.J. Can go this season. Um, there's also a possibility the Jags could try and target a center and move Linder out to the guard position, but that guy's been, you know, your rock at the center position for a while. Uh, he has been getting hurt recently, which is, you know, makes me nervous but Mitch Morris will be a guy you know really solid addition to his offensive line one of the better guards available this season so I think if we're going to be dumping a lot of money into anybody it should either be Mitch Morris or Earl Thomas to really solidify uh, a spot of need that the Jaguars need to fill a need at uh, that's why I don't think the Jags should park up a lot of money to get Nick Foles because there's you know some quarterbacks you can draft in the draft that have a very very bright future that you could groom for a really long time be a homegrown talent for you guys like a Haskins or a Murray that's why you should dump in some money to really try and uh, improve that quarterback situation and getting Mitch Morris would help that cause tremendously of course, the Jags are still going to have to be uh, looking for a right tackle as well because Jeremy Parnell is just not going to be cutting it. But Cam Robinson, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder, Mitch Morris, and then getting a solid uh, right tackle. This is a offensive line that has improved. And, you know, 2017, the Jags had a really good offensive line uh, without Norwell and with A.J. Can. And, you know, they only let up 24 sacks, with the, which is a uh, franchise low. But if you could imagine all those solid offensive linemen adding Mitch Morris and then hopefully adding another good right tackle either in the draft or again in free agency, this offensive line is going to be very stout in protecting whatever rookie quarterback we have back there or even Teddy Bridgewater. And coming in at number one, I have wide receiver Cole Beasley. And again, don't take this like he's just the guy we need to target the most. Again, this isn't in any particular order. These are just eight free agents I think the Jags should go after. And I think Cole Beasley is definitely one of those guys. He's a number three wide receiver that can go off with number one wide receiver potential. I'd rather target him than uh, Jamison Crowder, who I recently uh, talked about earlier at number eight. 
Uh, I think that, again, he tore us up this <laughs> this season. He had like two or three touchdowns against us. You know, he has the potential to go off at any time, and I think he'd fit in well with the wide receivers we have now. He kind of fits that mold, being a solid number three wide receiver on the field with Marquise Lee and D.D. Westbrook. And uh, unfortunately, Keelan Cole is going to end up dropping down the depth chart, but that's okay. He might actually get cut next year. Uh, some surprise cuts, you know, that's another video I can make uh, down the road. For you guys, as some guys that I think will get cut next year that could surprise you. I think Keelan Cole is one of those guys. So Cole Beasley comes in, fills that void, and he has really solid hands. He doesn't drop the ball much. And he also makes a lot of circus catches as well. He's insane. He's a really good wide receiver, often underappreciated by the media. Not a lot of people talk about him. And I think that he'd be a good addition to the Jags because the Jags are in desperate need of wide receiver help. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of solid wide receivers in this year's free agency class. There's a couple in the draft, and I think the Jags will try and take like a second, third round pick to uh, solidify that spot in the draft. But uh, for the time being, they need to spend a little bit of money trying to improve that position in free agency. And unfortunately, I don't think they can afford a contract like a Crabtree or a Golden Tate. So, you know, getting a guy like Crowder or even Cole Beasley, who has shown flashes of being extremely solid, pairing him with a rookie quarterback or a guy like Teddy Bridgewater, this team could look completely different in 2019. And I'm all here for it. And that was eight free agents of the John Wars must sign in 2019. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Then just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.